How's it going, boys? Historic Anthology 5 is out, and let me tell you something. It is 100% amazing. The new Priator set is... Well, one of the best things that has happened to Magic in a long while. And this is most likely one of the most fun uh, fun decks that I have made in probably a couple of months. Every color has its own Preator, and we're going to be using the white, the black, and the blue one. This is a Gates to the Afterlife deck. So obviously we're using Stitches Suppliers, uh, Meyer Triton, and from the new anthology we're using a Grizzly Salvage. Now this is the only green, uh, green requiring thing in the deck, but the Grizzly Salvage is amazing. For 2 mana, you can look at the top 5 cards of your deck and choose a land or a creature. If you want, you can get it in your hand, otherwise it all goes to the graveyard. AKA, I know that this is the only card that requires green, but honestly the mana is not that intensive because we're not casting anything uh, on average that costs more than one specific mana, mana color. And this thing is is just worth it in my opinion. If you do not want it, you can put in strategic planning or sta uh, staggering planning or whatever other card you want. Uh, but if you play this, in my opinion, it's always worth it. And the Gates of the Afterlife combo with the God Pharaoh's Gift is absolutely amazing with this deck. You can cheat out a Jin Gitaxias Core Augur, which has the effect of drawing 7 cards for you. <clears throat> If you're in any danger any time, if you draw 7 cards with this, you will most likely find a solution with him. And the opponent's hand size is reduced by 7, aka at the end of the turn, they need to discard their hand fully. And that is 100% amazing. This card on the field, it makes the enemies target it, so they can't deal with God Pharaoh's gift if you just flipped it or did something like that. So there's combo into the protection sphere. And then you have, for example, this thing, Shell Dread Whispering One. This card makes the opponent sacrifice things, it resurrects things, and it has Swamp Walking, aka if someone owns a swamp, it can just attack directly and cannot be blocked, which is pretty neat. But the sacrifice part and the resurrection part is what uh, truly makes this amazing. And here we have the new Waifu Candidate, Elsech Norn, a Grand Kenobite. Oof. Now this card, honestly, is 100% something that Gates to the Afterlife wanted. Because, you know, cards get bigger and bigger, so 4-4 Resurrection with God Pharaoh's Gift, not that great at nowadays. Oh, but, if you're having problem with toughness, this thing get, gives everything you have plus 2-2, two, two, and the enemies get minus 2-2. Two and two. And also, you can use this as a, uh, as a minus 4. If you have two God Pharaohs gifting you to resurrect two of them, keep in mind every one of these Praetors is a legendary. Oh, but you know, that's just cool. <clears throat> also, we have Emery, just to get uh, give, get back the gates of the afterlife if they're milled, plus she mills four cards, pretty strong. Trophy Mage, in case, pretty much the same deal as Emery, in case uh, the gates of the afterlife are still in the deck. Uh, Tomebound Lich, our only way to actually reduce our own hand, if we exclude the fact that uh, Gates of the Afterlife are in play. Uh, one Scarab God, because it just fits there, it's pretty neat. Again, it can uh, cheese out the core Augur, and that's just absolutely amazing. <coughs> and then we have two God Phar three God Pharaohs Gifts, and two Platinum Angels. Platinum Angels are... Well, actually, they're kind of necessary in this deck. If you have this on the board, you may actually risk of milling yourself. But with a Platinum Angel, you have a chance to survive. Also, this, if you're extremely lucky, this can allow you to survive against elves or against something, for example, like goblins. It's rare, but it can happen, and when it happens, 10 out of 10 if it happens. And we have a bunch of lands. Four Fable Passages, because in reality, this deck does not require more than 3 mana on the board to be fully uh, to be fully played. Sometimes we're gonna get to 7 mana, but you know, that's kinda rare-ish. So yeah, all you need is 4 mana. A little bit of forest, uh, mostly black and blue. Uh, the, the, uh, the black and blue is kinda interchangeable. And 23 lands to be specific. Don't exactly need uh, 24 lands most of the time, because if you play this, chances are you can always fix your mana if mana needs fixing. So that is pretty good. And Fable Passage is just deck thinning. Deck thinning is, thinning is actually not bad in this deck. Again, 
100% amazing, boys. Anyway, without any further ado, let's just get a cracking and see what happens now, shall we? Again, one of the most fun decks I have made in a pretty long time at this point. And by the way, if you want to support the channel, just press the like button, just press the subscribe button, and press the bell icon, because that's the actual real like, uh, like and subscribe button. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Four lands, a gift of the afterlife, a mire trident, and a tombbound lich. Opponent goes first, that's kind of bad, but... Ooh, what are we gonna deal with here? Hello. Well, I guess hello. Cat on purple. Not too useful. Ah, yeah. <clears throat> Wait. Do I even remotely fear whatever this is? I honestly think I don't. Ooh, got this in the graveyard. Not bad. Too bad we didn't get uh, get to, to get the top the grizzly sal salvage, but I think it's fine. The Faris tutelage. My boy. My boy. I think, oh, did he just lose? Did he just lose? I know, that's what everyone's currently thinking. Has he just lost? Because chances are he can't get rid of Gate of the Afterlife. Let's just attack. Even if he draws enough cards to summon Krakens, he 100% doesn't expect that one sweet, sweet thing about this deck that no one expects. A Platinum Angel. No, seriously, who expects Platinum Angels in these decks? Oh my, yes, 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 yes! I'm gonna attack it, because honestly, his life points don't interest me that much. Please, creatures, we only need six in the graveyard for G G uh, Gate of the Afterlife to work. Well, first things first, we're gonna drop a... St okay, that's not bad. Drop it, drop it like this, and do it. then do it like this. We could mill exactly what is ne necessary. We're missing two, which should be possible. Yeah, oh, that, that's the flip, boys. That is uh, the flip. One. Yep, that's, that, that's the flip right there. Okay. Uh, wait, did I have anyone in the graveyard? No. Okay, deck thinning it is. From your library. Thank you very much. And now we can get this out. And I'm obviously gonna go in this situation for uh, this bad boy. Ah, uh, yes. And attack everything on the Defari. I'm just gonna lower his options. So, you see, this is the overpowered part about the deck I was talking about. It is kind of 100% insanely unpractical if if you get to flip the God Pharaoh statue to deal with this. Because if you deal with this, chance out there's no way you're dealing with the God Pharaoh statue. Which kind of makes all the difference. And as you can see, well, it's, it's pretty over. We just drop this, flip it like it's hot. And that's gonna be all. Uh, your hand. He probably thinks he may actually have a chance, but again, this is the trick. Watch this. We drop this, and everything gets a huge buff. Yeah. This is the power that Praetors gave to the gate decks. And I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty huge, as you can honestly see. It is definitely nothing to scoff about. And it's really, really fun. It is, like, super fun. I almost uh, went past the 3-hour three, uh, three stream limit that I usually have, because this deck was so good. Ah, uh, yes. Well, it, it is really enjoyable. Like, these Praetors just make it worth it. The fact that you can wipe whole boards with a minus 2-2, two, two, absolutely lovely. The fact that no one expects Platinum Angels, all lovely. The fact that someone needs to discard all of their hand because of reasons at this point, absolutely, uncontestably lovely. Okay, I'm gonna start off like this. And I'm not gonna drop the Stitches Supplier. One thing Arena does a lot when you're playing these decks is, yes, it fakes you. Well, in this case it wasn't that bad, but Arena does this a lot. If it gives you a Stitches Supplier on turn uh, thir uh, on your opening hand and you have two lands, if you drop the Stitches Supplier on turn one, most of the times you're instantaneously milling your third land. That is something Arena does so, so ridiculously often. Also, I have no idea what this guy's playing. 90 cards! Well, I guess I'll just die then. 
Also, we got this down. Again, the faster you get the gates to the afterlife down, the better. Okay, at this point, two cards in the graveyard. This is a potential third. If we get to play this, it's gonna be amazing. Also, also, uh, also, also, a thing that Tarina really likes to do. It likes to start your hand with the big cost things a lot. Like, sure, we do have a couple of, like, big plus, uh, seven plus. Are you joking? Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Should have expected, honestly, that. Ah, uh, what am I? New to this game to not expect this? Yeah. He's most likely dropping something that completely ruins everything. There is a chance we win, obviously, because Platinum Angels can be put in the graveyard, but, you know, usually they do run with the forecast. I'm assuming he's just gonna do, uh, what you might call it? Uh... Oh, he's not. I thought he's gonna drop the forecast blue shrine that gives him a draw. Because that's usually a lot better, you know? A Lotus Cobra? Are you just literally the worst deck in the history of decks to the history of ever? Maybe. Anyway, here's the green, and here's the cream. Let's see. Ah, uh, yes. Do we want any of this? Actually, yeah, I'm gonna take the trophy mage. That should be enough to flip. There we go. The flip is real, boys. Uh, search... A library there's one at least yup there we go there we go and now i'm gonna take this and i'm take uh, gonna take the gates from here and now let's see now oh, we actually don't have any of the ones that i wanted so i'm gonna go for the extended value play considering we're only attacking with one creature this is absolutely fine <clears throat> okay because this will resurrect something next turn, and that's gonna probably be the big one. We're most likely, obviously, res resurrecting our waifu, and by the way, 100% claimed. Don't you even look at her. Okay, let's see. Oh, uh, wait, he sacked? Oh, yeah, he sacked. That makes sense. Okay, now it's gonna be really hard for him, because if I draw a land, I can potentially do stuff. And even if that's not a thing, I can just grizzly salvage something, and it's just... Currently, oh, that's really annoying. Oh, that's super annoying. Mud dude, can I please stop the land? Uh, let's see. Well, obviously this. I'm not gonna let those things bother me. And eh, not exactly a land, but you know, I guess. Okay, let's just go for the land. Uh, Fable Passage, it doesn't really matter too much what we pick here. I'm just gonna go for, for this and the extra blue. Why? Don't know. Don't ask. It's just the way I t do things. Okay, do this, get back this, and ta-da! Drop it like it's hot. Okay, now he doesn't have too many choices. Also, cannot be blocked because reasons. Yeah. Now the only thing that pretty much saves him at this point is obviously only a wipe. I don't know what I should get out of the graveyard at this moment. I would obviously love to get the core Augur, because that would just ruin his day. But yeah, look at this. Oh, right, that's not the shrine that creates things. Ooh, dude, you need to sack... Okay, annoying. Really annoying, by the way. Wait a minute. Oh, that it's dead. Whew, for a moment there, I thought it's actually not that great. Oh, uh, but it seems fine. Oh, a lot of these salvage cards. I don't honestly want them. Okay, uh, yes, now we're gonna put the core Augur in there. It's fine. So, flip, drop, play, play. I think that's gonna be the play. Get it? The play. Okay, so, first things first, obviously. Sag this. Okay, where are all of my things? Uh, one's in the graveyard, okay. Let's take it out from the graveyard, because I'm a little... I, there should be no reason why he has any graveyard hate, but you know, le let's just be a little bit smart about decision-making, okay, boys? Okay, and now he can obviously, like, kill one, but what does killing one do? Obviously not a lot. He's gonna, probably gonna do something there. I'm gonna flip two, and when I flip two, I think that's gonna be pretty much it. He's most likely gonna try... Okay, what do we want killed? 
Honestly, I don't kind of care too much. Might as well go for the stitches supplied. Why not? He's gonna kill it no matter what. His whole game plan couldn't really consists of literally just sanctuming, uh, sanctuming things. Maybe he's not gonna do it because he feels he can... Hello? Arguable? Huh. He's not doing anything? Okay. Well, he has two... Okay, hello there. Well, whatever, drop this. Uh, it's not gonna be super easy at this point, because it's like... Su he just has an uh, annoying amount of things. But he doesn't have the draw, which kind of actually gives me a huge, uh, huge edge here. Uh, from your hand, from your uh, graveyard? Is it graveyard again? I'm not paying attention too much to that. It seems it's the library. It's not the library. Oh, it was the graveyard. Okay. Serious? Oh, yeah, he got one. I didn't... Wait, I didn't notice it's there. Ah, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. So, here's the play, right? I'm gonna get this. And then I'm gonna get most likely. Now, actually, I need to kind of force it a little bit. So let's go for this. I'm gonna do it like that because yeah, he he's gonna kill it. He, he's killing everything, and I want him to be out of cards. If he draws one card, I can resurrect uh, something really annoying next turn for him, and maybe he doesn't deal with that. It's kind of hard to say, because it is a shrine deck at the end of the day. You see what I mean, by the way, about the 4-4? Four, 4-4 four? Four, four is arguably not the best statistics nowadays for a card. Oh, but as you can see, there are a lot of good things about this. I like how he taps it. Well, I have a scat of God and everything's a zombie on the other hand. So, what can he actually do? Not a lot. He's probably thinking that maybe there's a chance for the last dance of vintage. Uh, but in reality, it's just gonna be spinach. Okay, so here's the play now. We resurrect, obviously, one card. And that magical one card that we're gonna be resurrecting is... First of all, where is he? Here he is, a Tonebound Lich. You resurrect a Tonebound Lich, we discard this. And then we resurrect it, which means there's only one card that he can target. Which is quite annoying for him. And by the way, yeah, we have absolutely no white in the deck. Obvious reasons are obvious, I guess. Uh, but yeah, and this Scarab, uh, Scarab God deals damage to him, so there you have it. He's currently gonna be stuck pretty much on discarding and tapping things until, well, un until it's over at this point. Obviously, he can do some damage, he can do some things, but I'm not sure if he can win. Like, he doesn't have the best chances, it seems like. He's gonna discard, he's gonna tap, he's gonna... Meh, I don't know. It, it's dodgy if we, uh, if we can or can't win this. Might as well just do it like this. I want to drop some things. Actually, I don't want to drop things. I just want to take his Lotus Cobra to prove a point. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad like that. Okay, and let's take a uh, trident from our uh, from our own storages. So at this moment in time, as you can clearly see, it's either he locks out and gets something really, really good that I am 100% unable to deal with, aka a wipe, or, you know, something else happens, which is doubtful. Because again, his only uh, action... Wait, he didn't kill it instantly? Wait, do I not have a platinum angel in the graveyard some magically how seriously wow yeah i have not hit oh there it is okay well there it is okay so he can kill this and that's what obviously he's gonna do with that one card Ooh, i know cute right and now he can tap two creatures. Tapping two creatures, very cool. Very cool enemy con. But is it enough? Arguably. If he top decks a rat, it is over. 
Oh, but I kind of really doubt that he stopped decking of that. Also, I'm not exactly too worried about my HP just because those things exist. Oh, almost misclick. Okay, even if he top decks a rat, he's still in a situation where he can't win because I resurrect two things. And that means he can't kill. I, I essentially just deal uh, 10 damage. So, you know, and a scarab god. So, th there's very little chances he has. Let's put cat on purple for maximum luck in in influence. Cat on purple, plus 20 luck, by the way. Patented. It's not gonna work for you, but it definitely works for me. Okay, boys, you see that? Yeah, winning a shrine deck. Admittedly pretty lucky, I would say. But yeah, I, 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 I dedicate this win to Grizzly Salvage and Grizzly Salvage alone, by the way. So yeah, uh, most of the time I lose with this deck against uh, people who have the perfect hand. They literally counter everything we do, and we don't even have a chance. We don't even get to play the game. That Those are the only things I have actually lost uh, with this deck, too. I haven't played against too much red aggro or things like that, but... You know, life gain is kind of meh, because tritons and uh, uh, liches have death touch. And other things, oh, this is good. I get I get the black, I get the green, I get the grizzly salvage. It's everyone's favorite pastime. Eh, is this going to be one of those decks? Eh, it looks like I don't even need to do that. Okay. Boop. Okay, do I want to maybe drop Emery first? Nah, well, uh, well I'm going to drop Emery over to uh, Tonebound Lich. That's what I'm kind of saying. Okay, we got we, we got lands for days. Let's see what else do we want. Uh, definitely a stitch of supply. It would seem good. Actually, you know what? Maybe a basic land was a little bit better. You know what? Is there no? There's not. So tonebound lich it is. Gonna put this in the graveyard just so you know, added insult to injury and whatnot. Okay, at this point we're just essentially looking uh, for a couple of things. Just a gate, and it's done. One, two, three. Three things in the graveyard, one thing on the field, four things in the graveyard. Most likely double milling will hit the target mark. So it's just about Emery surviving at this point. And I think Emery's gonna survive, not gonna lie, boys. Ooh, a Platinum Angel. Very, very much cute. Stage of Supply, go. And, well, that's at least Emery, uh, Emery's job secured right there. Oh, man, look at this art. Ain't that literally amazing? No new, uh, no new card comes out with art even remotely close to something like this. Magic really does have good art. Well, in the old times. Now, nowadays, Wizards is incapable to make females distinguishable from males. You never know what you're actually dealing with. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, no, 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 my friend. What are you doing? Well, whatever you're doing, I honestly don't think that's gonna be the play. Because Emery's doing stuff, my boy. Emery is 100% like currently thinking stuff ahoy. So watch this. Again, the pirate, uh, the the Preators. L l l l let's look at uh, was there uh, probably library. Okay, watch this. Look at that damage. Literally out of nowhere, by the way. Literally out of nowhere, that damage. And now he needs to kill this. Everything. And if he does kill it, next turn I can just get this back out. And he's yet again in a kerfuffle situation. Does he kill it? Does he not kill it? I'm also gonna drop an... Uh, yeah, that's completely fine. Stitch suppliers, blah blah blah. Look at this. Uh, gonna drop the Emery. Gonna drop some random land. Doesn't exactly matter too much. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do that just yet. Okay, and let's just check it. And now let's force him to do that again. Let's force him to do that again. Essentially, he can't win. If he doesn't kill this, I am 100% just, you know, doing uh, doing my things. And he, he, and he, there's no way he can actually affect it in any way. 
You see, this is the power of the core augur. It just creates situations where there's no win situation. Well, actually, even if it wasn't the core augur, I guess the situation would still not exactly be different, but hey. <laughs> Treasure deck, are you not? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't, who knows. 16 cards left, Platinum Angel Galore. Okay, you have you have four thingies. And you concede. That's right. You can't you even if he has Zelda and Wreckage, he can't use it because of the Core Augur. Again, this deck creates so many absolutely disruptive situations, it's insane. Lovely. Lovely stuff, as one might say. Well, as I would say. Ten out of ten. Again. Best, best, best set release in a long time. Like, why does Wizards even bother creating new cards? They fail at it constantly. They might as well just, you know, make all the cool old ones. And look at this. Oh, God. Um, This is nice, but not viable, Mulligan. This is nicer. Might as well put it there. Okay, do I want to start with a stage of supply? Probably no. Oof. Ah, well, maybe Stitch... Okay, definitely Stitch's Supplier is the play. Okay, now I need to make Stitch... Yeah, forced loss, I think. Yeah, it looks like a forced loss. Mill three lands. Angel. Yeah, turn three angel and it's over for me. Yeah, the deceptively good opening. Again, deceptively good opening is the name of the game. This is actually not going to achieve anything. He's most likely dropping something that I am 100% not dealing with. No? Next turn, maybe, my friend? Uh, yeah, sure, attack me with that. I, I, It's, like, really hard for me to believe that I would be capable of winning, honestly, you know? Uh, what's the chances of actually milling enough things, by the way? I'm assuming pretty low. Okay, well, I'm blocking that for sure. Let's mill. That's actually pretty good, not gonna lie. That was actually pretty on point. I'm gonna put that in the graveyard in case. Oof. Okay, currently it's definitely the play that I need to... Wait, is that enough? One, two, three, four, five. Five! Not enough. Okay, it's time to attack, my friend. Attack. Okay, he chose to not attack. What a scrub. Yeah, this is gonna be the problem. Do I have to- Yes! Okay, if I top deck a land, I can actually get out of this. No, I can't. He just drops the angel and it's over. Damn it! So close, yet no cigar. Oh, if he only attacked. Is, is he actually, like, doing math and dumb stuff? Man. Yeah, see... It always seems so close, but you, you you can literally tell when the game just wants you to lose. You can tell it so easily. He just needs to wait at this point, and that's it. We didn't get a fourth land. Even if we mill everything now, it's just not gonna be enough. Yeah. I can get one, but it doesn't mean anything. I'm assuming he's dropping a big buff now, right? No, at least... Well, maybe I can actually survive a little bit longer. Nope, nope, nope. As always, it is so easy to tell when you are uh, forced to lose. It's ridiculous at this point. It is absolutely ridiculous how easy it is to tell that you are uh, being forced to lose a game of magic. Like, nothing goes your way magically. And the enemy just has the perfect solution for the situation. Yeah, magic tries to hide it. But, you know, it's, it's, it, you, you can literally just feel it. Especially if you have, like, one, two games in a row, or three games in a row, or something like that. You are capable, you, you just know. It's like, it's just a little bit too suspiciously exactly on the money. It's a little bit too suspiciously either 100% insta loss because perfect hand, or it's like that classic, ah, just one turn more. In our case, it was one land more for like 50 million turns. Ah, uh, well. You can't win them all. Because wizards will never allow you. Okay, Emery, a gate. 
Yeah, this is not bad. Gonna go for the green with this. Uh, what are you? That's a lot of lands. That would have been neat last game, game. How about that? Okay, let's go for this. Not sure what I'm actually gonna hit with all of this. Hello there, what are you, my friend? Actually, scratch that. I don't want to know. Oh, uh, but you're definitely something. So, do I go for the deck thinning or milling? Excuse me, you just what, mate? Did he just guy is blessing me? Okay, well, that's at least two things milled. We already have almost 50% of our lands in the graveyard door in the hand. Pretty neat. Okay, Emery's dead. Ah, which is absolutely fine. We still have a gate right here. Okay, do it like this. And if anything happens, we have a trophy mage. Not sh Oh, wait, is this, uh... There is a chance he's killing the gate, isn't he? Yep. Elspeth Conqueror's dead. What, what, what a surprise. Yeah. Uh, but this thing... Okay, that's, that's a peculiar amount of lands at this point. Uh, but the good part is, obviously, that we can still do some things. One, two, three, four. Four, essentially. Um... A saga deck? I'm not sure, but anyway, as you can see, uh, 80 cards, yeah, it's not gonna be pretty now, is it? Okay, I'm gonna go for another blue, I guess, and then I'm just gonna play this. Let's see, do I want any of this? Actually, yes, this is a little bit more mill, plus I don't have anything to do otherwise anyway. There we go. Okay, and... How much off am I actually getting it? One, two, three, four. Still four! My deck has 25, 26 creatures? That's good to know! That, that That's very good to know! Okay, drop the trophy, mage. No panic, huh? Okay, take action. Let's see if about your no panic stratagem. You know, you're gonna have to do something with this anyway. Because at some point I'm gonna achieve critical masso. Also, I'm not flipping this. I'm afraid he has something to deal with this. Settle down wreckage? Seriously? Sandworm convergence? Seriously? Well, thank god, nothing's flying. Okay, let's see. Well, Platinum Angel is a flyer, technically. Okay, drop this. It, it, this is no time for, you know... He needs to block. God, that's the th thing I wanted to see. Because I will... I think this is the flip, right? Oh, boys, yes. That's the flip. That's the flip. Okay, let's see. And now I can flip all of these things. Pretty good. Pretty good. Library. Still three left. Pretty amazing. Okay, let's see. Dude, if he... If, if he cleansing knows this, I'm gonna be a little bit a lot mad, not gonna lie, boys. Just a lot mad. Okay, he goes for the Binding of the Old Gods. Annoying, but understandable. Not really, but annoying. So, how is he gonna do stuff? Um, I got a Scat of God of my own. I think I'm just gonna go for the Yin Graxi BBB. Okay, no, that is actually... Okay, let's drop the Platinum... No, let's not... Well, actually, let's drop the Platinum Angel. Why not? Okay, and now I'm gonna do the... Now I'm do doing this. Yeah, I'm doing that. Attack with this, attack with that. There's still something we can get... Uh, we can get another God Pharaoh's gift out of this, so it's okay. Actually, can we? Two... Yeah, we can, we can, there's still, yeah, there's still one, so we can do something here. Okay, that's not bad. As long as he gets the sacrifice his full hand, it's gonna be good. Let's see, is anything of this needed? No, Gate of the Afterlife, okay, oh, oh, wait, this actually works out pretty swell. Haha! <laughs> yeah, this works out pretty swell. How many do I need to discard? Hello, game, please, tell me. Submit one. Yeah, it's the ogre. Okay. 
So, now he needs to kill this. Most likely, he only has a chance to kill that. Which is kinda good if you catch my drift. Too bad this can't attack, by the way. Quite annoying. Oh, but it should be fine, right? Dude, attack me if you want. What do I care? He's wiping the board, isn't he? Yeah, he's wiping the board. For someone who has 2 billion cards in the deck, one may argue that that's pretty lucky, but you are dead, my friend. You are 100% as dead as they... It's just a rigged game, what can... Whoa, whoa, dude. What are you gonna do about it? It's just rigged. Magic is 100% the most rigged game in the history of probably ever. Yeah, it's not, it's not like I have a choice what to actually get here. I could have tried that, by the way, but I honestly doubt that that's gonna be too effective. Okay, now I do this. He needs to block. There's still a good chance I win. He may actually try to save the Golos, but man. AD card deck literally top decks everything in perfect succession. You, you gotta love it. Mwah. You gotta love that. You gotta love that stuff, boys. Well, whatever. There are two cards in the graveyard, which means Uvu time. And I can put this so it's gonna be better. Let's see, does he top deck the solution? Oh my, yeah. Of course he does. Of course he top decks the solution. Did anyone ever think that he won't? You can't... You, you're not allowed to win in magic. You're just not allowed. It's illegal. But I'd still win. Even though magic tried real hard to force this loot. Wait a minute, do I even win? One, two, three, four, five. That's six. God. Magic tries so hard to force people to win, it's insane. And that that's why it's so egregious, by the way. Because you can literally just see. Okay, I can't actually misplay an uh, graveyard? Yeah, graveyard it is. Okay, attack. <laughs> oh, man. What a game. Gonna take you because you're like second best waifu. Okay. He can't do anything, right? Oh wait, he can actually do still something. Dude, seriously? Are you gonna just stop dig a second on doing version? Is that what's gonna happen? No. Yes? I, I, I see that you can deal with it for some reason, by the way. Oh, you had mana left? Yeah, it has swamp walking. Okay, so you, yeah. Oh, dude, I didn't even see that he has mana left. But yeah, as you can see, it's pretty egregious, honestly, how much the game is trying to force you to lose. But this deck is so good because of these new cards that it deals with almost anything and it's just... It, like, the whole point of the Gates deck is that you just create stuff and overwhelm your opponent. But that stuff by itself is not actually a consistent threat. It's only a threat when it attack, attacks. But, but these cards have made it. So, even if these cards just don't attack and stay AFK, they still have an effect. And that's a 10 out of 10. Anyway, so this was Kuzer Sensen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the channel, check out the Discord, check out uh, the Patreon, check out the everything, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.